What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Darmo Shark Darrow M2. This thing is really taking me by surprise so far, but has Darmo Shark gotten their first magnesium mouse done right? Let's check it out. Here's a look at what the box looks like if you've owned a Darmo Shark mouse in the past. Very similar stuff as before. And included inside of the box, this is the 4K version. It does come with a user manual or starter guide, some additional four corner skates, a USB-C cable. This does come with the 4K dongle for the 4K version. I did see that they are coming out with a different version where the LCD screen will actually display information on it, like the DPI pulling rate and stuff like that. This is not that version. All there is is a LED light indicator behind the screen, so no information actually does pop up on it and over here at the bottom for the functionality you do have this wide cut open design which i'm a huge fan of it honestly feels really good all around but the power switch is over here on the right side you can power it down to turn the mouse on and this will enable the 4k receiver put it in the middle to turn it off and if you were to switch it up this does come in the bluetooth mode over here on the left side you do have these little buttons up here is where you can actually adjust the dpi and then down here is where you can actually adjust the polling rate for the mouse so you don't have to go inside of the software in order to do so. I do still recommend downloading the software however since you are able to adjust the debound setting time inside of the software. We'll go over that a little bit later. I believe this out of the box had a default setting of about four milliseconds on the debound setting. But aside from that, the skates that come in here, I absolutely love this skate design. I think they nailed it out of the park. I love this bigger skate design. It gives you the option whether you want the bigger skates, whether you want to do small skates, you know, the four corner skates. So plenty of real estate here. And without question, one of my happiest moments when I pulled this out of the box and I took these stickers off of these skates, I was really happy to see that they actually threw some really high quality good skates on this mouse they feel really great i've been using these on mostly a control pad I've been testing this out with the mori version 2 and all around the experience has been great the holes that are all over the top you can see they're pretty big here it allows you to see pretty easily inside of the mouse and as far as the overall hole design goes i didn't have too many issues of it when i was gaming with it these rear holes right here they're really big and you can easily fit your fingers inside of the mouse but as i was gripping it I didn't notice my hand sinking into it too much with my grip style. And as far as these holes on the side go, you know, for me personally, obviously I don't like having holes on the side, but these holes weren't that bad for me. I was able to adjust to them pretty easily. And though you can feel your finger obviously dipping into them, I really didn't feel like they were that bad. For me, they worked out a little bit more comfortably than something that's on the WL mouse. I just couldn't seem to figure out a way that I can use those without using the grips on there. So my personal preference is I would prefer to use grips with this mouse. So hopefully X-Ray Pad or somebody that creates great grips will come out those in the future. But like I said, hasn't been too much of an issue for me. I have kind of gotten used to it. And when it comes to the coating, honestly, the coating, it feels really similar to my WL mouse. It's just this kind of just painted kind of slippery coating on there. So there is no additional grip that you're getting from the coating that's on here. And if your hands get wet, it does make the experience overall a bit more slippery. This is using the brand new TTC transparent blue Falcon white dot switches in them. And honestly, they feel really good. I really feel like it's possibly that they tried copying or getting somewhat close to the Juana blue shell pink dots. Now they don't feel identical to them, but overall they're incredibly lightweight and crispy and they do have some similarities to them. I do kind of feel like these are a little bit more clicky and the Juano Blue Shell Pink Dots that I was playing around with felt just a little bit lighter, but all around very close and they feel incredible in here. I'm really happy that they opted for a switch like this and they stayed away from the optical switches, but the click implementation on here, it really does feel fantastic. It's incredibly lightweight no matter where you actuate the switch. I was really shocked to see how easy it is all the way even from the back to activate the switch. So really solid and consistent and stuff there but when it does come to the buttons as you can see here the post and pre-travel on my unit is absolutely incredible on both mouse one and mouse two the only issue i'm having however is there is some play left to right here on the mouse one and two i didn't notice an issue as i was gaming with it in game i'll see if i could tighten up a little bit but one thing i kind of wish that they could 
tighten up perhaps possibly a little bit more in the future. I'm really liking the design they went with on the scroll here. A lot of these magnesium mice are using a metallic or plastic style scroll wheel. It does sit a little bit lower. I would prefer if it's set up a bit higher there, but I like how it has a rubberized ring on it. And this scroll wheel, it feels really good. It's honestly really tight out of the box. It was actually pretty tight. It's loosened up quite a bit, but it doesn't really give you audible sounds when you're scrolling it. You can feel the steps as you're scrolling it, but like I said, they're just really muted. But when you do press on the center scroll click, as you can see, a nice solid clicky sound there and all around the implementation on it feels great. The rubber that is on the scroll here is a little bit more on the slippery side. It's not incredibly grippy, but it does look good and it does work great for me. And like I said, I am glad that they did decide to go with the rubberized option here. The side buttons on my unit also have been feeling incredibly solid. With this rear side button here starting out, if you were to push all the way in the back, it does get some play back there as you can see, so a little bit more movement. But as you make your way up in the center, there still is a slight bit of play on the pre-travel, but other than that, it feels solid, has great post-travel, a nice solid stop. As I'm gaming on this, the way that I grip it is kind of a more forward style grip right here. So when I did activate these side buttons, I kind of had to reach back a little bit to get that rear side button. So I was never playing in the very back of that side button there. So I didn't notice too much of the play. And in the front, it's really solid there. So. All around great implementation on the side buttons and they felt great for me as I've been using them in game. So aside from a little bit of the play on the side buttons and a little bit movement over here left to right on clicks one and two, everything else about the experience of using this, the shell has been insanely solid, no type of bending or flexing at all. So let's go ahead and drop a click and quality sound check. When it comes to the weight and balance, one of the first things that I noticed immediately and I was even looking out for as I was looking at the design of this mouse before I got it in my hands is I was curious to know what battery came inside of this. And immediately I knew when I saw that it had a 500 milliamp hour battery sitting in the back, I knew that it was going to be a little bit rear heavy. And when I did get out of the box, it is clearly a little bit rear heavy there. So for people that do prefer a higher span of battery life, 500 milliamp hour batteries last me around four to five days of use. But when it does come to the side to side balance, everything feels spot on there. And the weight of the mouse coming in on my scale sits at approximately 44.3 grams. They're using the exact same software that they used on their previous mice, so extremely easy to use. You just come over to this tab is where it allows you to set your DPI and also allow you to set the polling rate of 4K. Coming over to this next option, this is where it will allow you to adjust the debound setting. I recommend dropping it down to zero milliseconds. If you are having any double clicking or any slam click issues, you can raise this up one millisecond at a time until that issue goes away. But for me, these are the settings that work best for me, get me the best click latency and performance overall. And when it does come to the performance, that has been by far one of the most shocking things about this mouse for me. I went ahead and threw this on the X lat and I was really shocked to see the numbers I was getting in on this coming in with the 4k the 2k and the 1k there was a bit of variance there with the overall performance but as you can clearly see here i was not at all expecting the 4k performance to come out and even beating the final mouse ULX in my test results. All right, so now let's jump into the overall shape analysis of this mouse. And I can truly tell you that the shape is one of my favorite things and the thing that I was looking for the most when it comes to this mouse. As I mentioned before several times in my previous videos, I used to main the final mouse Starlight 12 small for about a year. And this is a very similar shape but it does have all the adjustments that I pretty much would have made to the mouse myself to make it just a little bit better. The overall size of this, as you can see right here, we have the Final Mouse Starlight 12 small. Over here is where we have the ULX. This is the medium size. It clearly sits about right in the middle of both of them. And a couple of things myself personally that I've always kind of disliked about the Final Mouse is first off this button placement right here, since I do kind of grip the mouse, more towards up the front. If you were to push kind of tight on here, you can get some movement there on the mouse one and the mouse two themselves if you were to grip kind of higher up towards the front. So one real solid improvement that they made is you can see they lifted up the wall over here on the side. I've always kind of disliked how the 
side buttons were too close together here on the final mouse, they did kind of spread them out apart and give them a little bit of this gap. All right, so first off here, let's go ahead and throw this up against the final mouse Starlight 12 Small. As you can see, starting on the bottom, the curve profile between these is incredibly similar, if not identical to one another, but the M2 does sit a bit wider. The width that sits at the top and the curve profile dropping from the middle down to the sides is pretty similar on both of these, not too far apart from each other. But again, the M2, it does sit a little bit wider. And then finally coming over here on the side, when I'm holding both of these in the hands, I do feel like this top hump profile over here on the final mouse, it does feel a bit more flat. Next up, we're comparing to the Final Mouse ULX. This is the medium size. Coming over to the bottom on both of these, again, same curve profile as the scaled up version of the Starlight 12 Small, but as you can see, the medium is a bit larger all around and a little bit more wide. Even coming over here to the rear profile with the top curve profile down the sides, sitting at the top, the medium also does feel a little bit more wide in the hands. And lastly, we'll be throwing it up against the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. I really do feel like the scale of both of these mice are incredibly similar to one another. First off, if we were to stack these together, you look at the height up here in the front. And then coming over here on the bottom, as you can see, the M2 is a flatter profile mouse. When I put these together and I touch the very most middle point, they're incredibly close to one another. I do feel like the M2 might be just a hair wider over here in the middle, but the Viper Mini does flare out more aggressively towards the front and the rear, so it does feel wider towards the front and back on the Viper Mini. The top hump up here feels a lot more narrow. It does curve down to the sides more aggressively. When it comes to the height of the mid-hump profile on the Razer Viper Mini, as you see, it's a little bit more aggressive and sits a little bit higher there. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the Darmo Shark Darrow M2. Ever since I've gotten this out of the box, I've been enjoying it so much, I haven't been able to put it down. Since this is the typical size that I look for in a gaming mouse, I really do feel like they nailed all the most important design aspects of this mouse. So hopefully they will be able to tighten up the side button just a little bit on the rear and fix the side to side play up here on mouse one and two in future batches. But aside from that, I've been absolutely loving this thing and I can definitely say that I would recommend checking this out. All right guys, so if you have any additional questions or feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.